Welcome back to my Linux Commands for Beginners series. In the previous video, I gave you guys an introduction to package management. And in this video, I think it makes sense for me to show you how to manage running processes on your Linux system. So we're gonna take a look at the systemctl command in this video, which basically allows you to start, stop, and restart services that are running in the background, which in this case are actually called units. So let's go ahead and check out how to manage units in Linux. Okay, so here we are back on my machine. And in the previous video, I walked you guys through installing Apache, and then I walked you through removing it so you would also know how to remove packages as well. But I'm gonna use Apache as an example again because I think it makes a lot of sense. So I'm going to reinstall it. So I'll do sudo apt install apache2, that's the name of the package. And I'll press enter to accept the defaults. It's just basically going to install some dependencies here, something you already are aware of if you watched the previous video. And there it is, it's installed. Now switching over to my web browser. This is the default page for Apache. And just to make sure it's working, I'll refresh the page because you know we did install it and then remove it. Now we're installing it again. And you know it, it doesn't give me any, any errors. And I just accessed this web page by simply typing localhost because I have this installed on my local machine. Although in your case, if you have your Linux instance on a different machine, you would have typed the IP address of that machine here instead. So how does this work? How are we able to go to our IP address or localhost and get a default web page? Well, the reason why that works is because Apache is running in the background. I can use systemctl, and then I can use status, and then the name of the service, and this systemctl command is part of systemd, which is actually the main method by which running processes are managed in Linux systems nowadays. There's other solutions to manage running processes and services other than systemd, but systemd is the most common, and that's what's used here in Ubuntu, so that's what we're using. Systemctl is one of the commands that's included in systemd. And then we give it a keyword, in this case, status. I wanna check the status of something. And what I wanna check the status of is Apache 2, that's what we installed, so I'll press enter. And we can see some interesting information here. So we can see that, that the service or unit, which is what systemd calls services, we can see that's, that it's enabled. What does that mean? So that means that when I restart this computer, that Apache's automatically going to start. If this said disabled, then it wouldn't start automatically. Vendor preset means what is it by default? So basically when you install the package, is it gonna be automatically enabled or not? In this case, we know it's going to be automatically enabled because right here the vendor preset is enabled. So anytime you install this package, this systemd unit is automatically going to be enabled for you. In fact, it's also going to start this service for you automatically, which is why we were able to go to the default Apache website without actually having started anything ourselves. The current status, which is probably the most important thing here, is active and running. So we know that Apache is running successfully. Here we see some log output. We'll get into logging in a different video, but the only log entries we have here is starting the Apache server and that's it. Now sometimes when you do status, you might need to use sudo in front of it so if this information is hidden in some way, if you don't see log output. If you don't see log output, it could be because there isn't any log output to show or simply because it's actually hidden. You don't actually need sudo in most cases to simply check the status of a unit, but sudo will make sure you get the extra information here. So um, I just recommend not using sudo unless you have to and just doing that, just checking the status. But if for some reason it doesn't show all the information, then you know sudo would make sure that it does. So what else can we do here? So what I'm gonna do, and I'll recall the command here, is I'm gonna just play around with this a little bit and change the keyword to a couple of things. I'm going to disable Apache 2 and press enter. And notice that I forgot to use sudo here and it prompted me for password because I need to use sudo, so I should have done that. So I just canceled that, I'll use sudo in front of the command here. 
And what just happened? So basically we see that it actually did execute a command to disable Apache 2 and it removed a symbolic link here. Um, basically it just removed this right here to ensure that Apache isn't going to start automatically. So let's just check the status here and see what's changed. So it's running, but I disabled it. So what's going on here? Well, disabling a, a systemd unit only means that the next time you restart the machine, that this service or unit is not going to start automatically. But it doesn't actually stop something that's currently running. In this case, it's active and running, so it's not going to stop it. So if I wanted to stop it, I would just do sudo systemctl stop, and then the name of the unit and press enter. And now if I check the status, we can see that it is inactive, it's dead, it's gone, it's just not running, it's disabled so it won't start when we restart the server, and it's not currently running because we stopped the unit. So if I go back here to my web browser and I try to refresh it, we can see that the site cannot be reached, it's not running. So back here at the terminal I can do sudo systemctl enable Apache 2 to make sure it does start when I restart the machine. And checking the status, we can see that it is enabled, but just simply enabling it doesn't make it start. To do that, we need to do sudo systemctl start Apache 2. And let's check the status again. It's running. And back at the web browser, I can refresh. And we can see that now it is, in fact, responding. We'll get back to the video in just a moment, but before we do, I just wanted to mention my sponsor, Linode. Linode is an awesome provider of cloud Linux servers. Setting up your Linux cloud servers or Linodes is quick and easy with their intuitive cloud manager interface. There are multiple instance types available to make any app or service flexible and scalable. If it runs on Linux, it runs on Linode. Use your Linode server to host a website, set up a VPN, create a Nextcloud instance, host a game server, and more. You can set up your Linodes in a data center nearest you with their latest opening in Mumbai in July 2019. If you need assistance, 24-7, 365 friendly support is available by phone or support ticket. Visit the URL on the screen right now to get started with $20 in credit you can use towards setting up your very own Linode. There are Linux instance types available for as low as $5 a month. So let's go ahead and get back to the video. Another keyword we have, let's go ahead and type it, is the restart keyword. And that's you know probably pretty obvious, but if you want to restart the unit, then that's what you would use. And you would do that anytime you change the configuration. With Apache, we have reload, which is more graceful, but we can also restart it as well, which is fairly common if you change configuration in a configuration file and you want that unit to take advantage of that, then you would restart the process right here. So I'll just do it and then check the status. And we can see that it's been running since about two seconds ago. So we can also see from this when we started the process last, which is actually important because if there's a problem and it's constantly restarting itself, well, then we can tell here that it hasn't been running that long. If this is a server that doesn't really restart all that often and is running a critical unit that always needs to be running, it might be a red flag if that was restarted recently. We would want to look into that to see if um, for some reason that was changed. So this is a relatively quick video, but I wanted to make sure you guys knew how to manage systemd units, which again just refers to a service that runs in the background, some kind of service or application that provides a feature or service to the server, like a web browser, file server, I mean, there's all kinds of them. And as you go through your Linux career, when you're learning, you'll find all kinds of different things you're, you'll install that you need to manage. It, it could be a database server, web server like I, me I mentioned, there's all kinds of different things. Even SSH itself, the ability to SSH into your server is also a service that needs to be running. So it's important to understand how to manage these running processes. So I definitely recommend you take some time and practice that. It's a fairly easy concept, but it is an important one. You're definitely going to want to know. And systemd is used in 
a, you know, a lot of distributions. So by learning these commands, you actually are going to know how to manage units in quite a few distros out there. I even have a video on my channel dedicated to systemd. So if you want to go even further into that, you could check out that video as well. But in the meantime, I hope this was helpful for you guys, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching my video. I really appreciate it. If you want to help me out, make sure you check out the description below this video where you'll find links to my latest book, Mastering Ubuntu Server, second edition, as well as my Patreon page. If you like this video, be sure to click that like button and share it on Twitter or any other social media network. And be sure to subscribe so you'll be the first to see my latest videos as they're uploaded. Thanks again.